Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and in this video we're going to watch The Expanse to see how accurate all the signs of technology in this TV show really are. We use its might to wrest control of cities from Earth, and Earth will go to war to take it back. It's all the same to us. No matter that artificial blue light that they were projecting on the ceiling is actually it's a small detail, but it is very, very important. And I'm wondering if they actually will they have like a curfew or something, and like that eventually becomes like darkness to symbolize that the sun is setting, and then it like and like if they like actually simulate all the different colors of light because the way that light reacts with humans is very, very important. And specifically, blue light is actually what's used to wake us up in the morning. Like if you shine blue light on somebody, they're gonna be more awake, more alert, and more aware. If you're trying to sleep, avoid any and all blue light because that's what's actually telling your body to wake up. So what you gonna do with your bonus check when we get this ice to series? Well, I'm not gonna make the same mistake as last time. Casino before brothel. You got cleaned out, yeah. And let me tell you, brothels on series. Don't like extending credit. The ice trawler Canterbury near Saturn is really, really cool. I'm a huge fan of, like, they actually got some scientific accuracy here, which a lot of TV shows and movies miss. This is, this is really cool. Saturn is not the only planet in our solar system with rings around it, and it's not even the closest. Jupiter is actually the closest planet to Earth that has the rings, but Jupiter's rings are made out of like dust and particles left over from like moons forming and like other like collisions in space whereas Saturn's rings are you know like as perfect as the show is so far Saturn's rings are made out of ice and rock so it would make a lot of sense that there's an ice trawler near Saturn because that's where you can harvest a lot of water in the form of ice to give you an idea of how far away Saturn is from Earth, NASA in 1997 released a spacecraft, Cassini, that didn't reach Saturn until 2004. It took seven years for that spacecraft to leave the surface of the Earth and get to Saturn. I'm sorry the gravity of a real planet hurts, but it's appropriate. You wish to hurt Earth. The Earth that is now crushing your weak belter lungs and your fragile belter bones. All you have to do to make it stop is talk. This is, in fact, very accurate with regards to how gravity would impact somebody when they're returning from outer space to the surface of the Earth. When astronauts return from the International Space Station, it takes about four to six months for them to get back to, you know, use the gravity of Earth. In fact, when they return, they can claim that it's hard to even move their tongue in their own mouth and they can feel the weight of their teeth. The acceleration of gravity on Earth is 9.81 meters per second squared and the acceleration of gravity on the moon is 1.62 meters per second squared. And that's about a six times difference, which means on the Earth, you're actually feeling six times more the force of gravity than you would be on the moon. Now, this poor guy comes from, like, you know, deep outer space, so his is actually even greater than a six times difference. Like, what that means for, like, a way to think about it, if somebody weighs 50 kilograms or 110 pounds, like, just from Earth's moon, and they come back to the surface of the Earth, then that same person is going to feel like they weigh 300 kilograms or 660 pounds. So you can imagine like it's really really hard to recover after all that time in space where your spine gets stretched out and there's really no force of gravity acting on you 24 7 just pulling you towards the center of the earth. Like that's why astronauts also when they come back they're actually slightly taller because their spines aren't as compressed. Those shoes are very, very cool, and that makes more sense to me than artificial gravity that they've shown us in like Star Trek and Star Wars and these other like uh, like whatever movies or TV shows they portray in outer space. Because 
you wouldn't be like running down a ship. You'd actually be floating like real astronauts do when they're on the International Space Station. These shoes would make a lot more sense to keep an astronaut grounded, but one of the questions I do have is like, how are they actually working? Because I don't believe that it's like magnetized because if it was, why weren't the shoes sticking to any of the surfaces while they were like going up through that like tunnel? Right? I mean, I feel that if they were run by magnets, they would just be sticking to everything all the time everywhere, but it seems like they're able to control when they turn it on and off, so I'm I'm actually not quite sure how those things are working. I want the cargo. Will SOS start negotiations for prisoner release, okay? Just... There's something you should know. The show was doing really well when it comes to like, you know, realistic sci-fi, but uh, why did they do that? When, I mean, so there, there are collisions and explosions and implosions and all, these are all, you know, happening in space even right now as we speak. And during an explosion like that, the, what can be released are uh, dust particles, rocks, you know, light, heat. These are all things that are dispersing throughout you know, space, but one thing that is not released is sound. If this explosion was to really happen, you would not hear anything because there's no medium for sound to travel through while it's in space. Since space is a vacuum, sound doesn't have any medium that it can bounce off of and eventually reach somebody's ears so that they actually hear what's they're, what they're seeing, essentially, right? Like, you'll be able to see the explosion, and you'll see the light and the ship fragments and everything kind of disperse around you, but there wouldn't be any sound that reaches. Like, for example, sound, um, like, sound travels much farther and it's much louder, like, it's rather more in higher intensity in water than it is in air because water has a lot more particles for sound to like go off of. That's why if you hear like whales going back and forth, whales can, can communicate over miles and miles. But try talking to your friend who's one mile away, even if you're screaming, it's really hard for them to hear what you're saying. Guess what? The Gold Life is now an affiliate partner of NordVPN. Information is a huge commodity nowadays. Companies want to know where you live, where your car is parked, what you eat, where you work, where you work out, the passwords you have, the websites you're on. Your personal information is being bought and sold by these giant tech companies without your permission. Protect yourself at all times on up to six devices using NordVPN. I have it on my laptop and my phone. That way whenever I go connect to a public Wi-Fi anywhere, I don't have to worry about a thing. Another cool deal is that you get to connect to other countries and get access to their Netflix movies and TV shows, giving you a whole new array of entertainment so you can binge even harder. Use my link in the description down below to get 68% off a two-year plan of NordVPN with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you want me to react to more episodes of The Expanse, let me know in the comments down below. Or if you want me to see any other movie, TV show, or anime, let me know about those as well. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay fresh, and stay golden.